And another thing that I think about as we navigate this environment, and I and I, I really anchor on inspirational leadership. So as a leader, what am I doing to inspire my team to show up every day and sell more software? And one of the things that I do is I constantly preach this to them and to myself. The two things in life you are in total control over are your attitude and your effort. I'm going to repeat that. The two things in life you have total control over are your attitude and your effort. In the good times and the bad times, you control your attitude and you can control your effort. And another thing too, if you have a positive attitude and you're working hard, people may hear your words, but they feel your attitude. That's a quote from John mm-hmm. Maxwell. From who? John Maxwell. And I'll give it to you again. This is this is another one I found that, that inspired me this week. People may hear your words, but they feel your attitude. So if you're showing up the right way, you're you know you're putting in the work, you're getting your MBA and your client's business in whatever industry that you're focused on. You know your client's business wow. better than they do. You'll be relevant. People want to talk to you. And if you know their business, you can help them solve business problems. And I don't care if if we're in a crazy macro environment or or we're in good times. If you're solving business problems, you can still be successful in in this space that we're in right now. Most of us never learned how to train our brains, which is why most of us needlessly settle, struggle, and worse, suffer. My name is Chris Doris, and I want to make brain training mainstream. This is my series, Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm interviewing badasses from all walks of life on what mental toughness means to them and their unique approaches to strengthening their minds. Hey everybody, welcome to Tough Talks, Conversations on Mental Toughness. I'm your host, Chris Doris. And before I introduce our guest today, I want to address our typical one housekeeping item which is if you are not receiving your copy of the daily dose in your email inbox every morning at around 6 a.m no matter where you are on the planet every day of the year uh, and if you're not getting notifications of my new blog posts which come out every tuesday and or if you're not getting notifications of these new tough talks podcast episodes Uh, which come out every other Thursday, then we can take care of all of that very, very virtually effortlessly, actually, by going to my homepage, which is ChristopherDoris.com, and there's a sign-up box right there on the homepage. Uh, Or you can go to ChristopherDoris.com backslash lists, L-I-S-T-S, doesn't matter, either one, and then put in your name, email address, and click, and then you get all the goodies. Uh, Now... I am super pumped to introduce uh, one of my favorite people in the world to you. Um, His name is Reggie Marable, and Reggie is someone that I met through uh, working with Salesforce. And he's the kind of guy that, well, someone like me who appreciates mental toughness, you you fall in love with him instantly because you see his level of integrity and his level of commitment to his own perpetual growth, his commitment to family, his loyalty to, to the people that he serves, it's, um, it's unparalleled. The guy, is, he's a damn winner. So, I mean, you know, Reggie, um, he went, you can see he went to Morehouse College here, go Maroon Tigers. Uh, there's a couple other people of relative import that also are alumni. Uh, well, one of them, his name is Martin Luther King. <laughs> and another Samuel Jackson. <laughs> and, um, you know, Salesforce bought Slack. Reggie right now is the head of sales for the CMT stands for Communications, Media, and Technology. So it's a huge portion of Slack's customer base or business. Uh, and, um, and he runs that. Now, Slack... Um, it's spelled S-L-A-C-K. Well, I guess you can see that. And uh, yeah, so Reggie was just given um, about nine months ago a huge, huge responsibility because Salesforce, just prior to that, bought Slack for $27 billion, buh, buh, B, billion, $27 billion. So you can, I mean, that's a hell, that's a hell of an investment, right? That's the most um, that I believe Salesforce, it, it's, it, now I believe it is the most that Salesforce has ever invested in acquiring a company. 
And so Reggie has an enormous responsibility, and um, he's, he's, you know, obviously an amazing selection. He also played um, professional football in the Canadian Football League, which is, which is amazing. And um, I'm going to ask him, uh, he met his uh, beautiful wife, April, I think it was about 20, maybe a little bit more than 20 years ago at a grocery store. I wanna, he told me that story a while ago, and I want to hear that. It's pretty, it's cool. And, uh, and they have two awesome kids. Kennedy, whose birthday was yesterday at the time of this recording, so happy 17th birthday, Kennedy, and Chase, who will be 15 in uh, March, this coming March. So, uh, all right, so with any further ado, uh, my man, he's, he's waiting on us. Let's go find Reggie. Where you at, buddy? Well, 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 well what, what do you know? There he is. There he is. Look at that smile. My man, Reggie Marvel. What's up, What's buddy? up, CD? So good to see you, man. See you, brother. I'm so happy that you're making time. I know you're busy as hell. So I really want to thank you straight out of the shoot for, for making time for this, man. It's a big deal. You're one of the greatest players that I know, one of the coolest people that I know. I'm really, really proud I said it. You're one of the baddest dudes I know. So by you asking <laughs> me to have this conversation with you, it's truly an honor. Thank you. So um, I mentioned in the intro, I, I mentioned your kids and uh, your daughter actually had a birthday yesterday. Um, and you told me a while ago about how you met your wife, April. And that's a fun story, man. So can we just start with that? A little lightness? Yeah, absolutely. So first and foremost, my wife's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. It's made me a better person, better man, better leader. So I owe a lot of my success to her. Mm -hmm. But we, we met at a grocery store, Kroger in, uh, in Atlanta. And I was going out to the nightclub. I had my fresh gear on. It was summertime, so I had I had a cut off linen sweater on, you know, showing off the guns. Oh yeah. Um, she was going out on a date, I guess, to break up with her boyfriend. Is what she told me. So we were both in line at the ATM machine, and I noticed her when I was waiting to get get cash. Turn around, I was like, "Wow, wow!" wow. And um, I thought I had some some good game, Chris. I, I asked, you know, went in, we started having a little conversation. I asked her for her phone number. And she wouldn't give me her phone number. This was back in the day when you had like home phones and answering machines. <laughs> so she wouldn't take, she wouldn't um, give me her number, but she took mine. And then she called me 48 hours later. Oh, that and, almost uh, never happens. That almost never happens. Yeah. yeah. And we went out first date. I knew then like that we were going to be together. So uh, first date, love at first sight. And uh, we're best friends, man. She's a mentor. Uh, so okay, I'm, I'm incredibly fortunate, you know, just, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. And you created it. Like, just think about this. Cause I love this. I love, love these kinds of stories because like, what if. Yeah. The, what if is a, what if I didn't have the courage or yep. the guts? That's right. In the moment the, you had a moments. decision to make in a window that was very, very small, a window of time. Yeah, and and I, I I I can't remember who said this quote, but real courage is when you're when you're nervous or scared and you saddle up anyway. Yeah, it was talking, maybe somebody right. said that. I, I like. Well, that. I'm just a firm believer in, you know, not ha being fearless, like not the no rejection. It's really just an opportunity to learn, figure out what you need to, what adjustments you need to make to be successful. So, if she would have said no, it would have hurt my feelings, but I would have got over it. Maybe I would have been like, maybe my approach needs to change. But she said, yeah. So, you know, every, every well, strike brings in addition closer to the next home run. Say, well, she didn't give, she didn't say yes to your phone number. <laughs> <She> <laughs> but I was in the game though. I was in the game. I was still you're, in the game. Obviously you're in the yeah. game. Cause I'm telling you, uh, you know, at least in my world, um, there was a point in time when I was, uh, you know, thick in the dating scene where I stopped giving my number. I said, no, nah, I'm not giving you my number. You know, it's either you, you give me yours because I guarantee you I will call you. Uh, that I don't think that worked any better. But uh, she called you, man. So obviously your game was on. But your kids clearly know this story, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And there's different versions of the story. Like she embellishes a little bit. <laughs> but but yeah, the the story is it's a true yeah, story. But, but one of the, but one of the most important pieces of the story. It was an opportunity that you weren't prepared for. So here's the takeaway already. For our audience 
is like practicing being the person that when life presents you with an opportunity and it becomes and it's and you are not prepared for it is practice capitalizing on that moment and and not being like what it like oh god but it, like thinking about what could go wrong but I, actually I, I was ready for it and, and I, you know i know it's not really popular to quote will smith but this is one of my favorite will smith quotes is if you stay ready you ain't got to get ready so i was ready just oh, like okay yeah and I, I just, roger that yeah i was ready I was oh ready. that's great i love that Okay, so I stand corrected. It's even better. You were ready. You didn't anticipate that that was going to happen right then. You couldn't. You couldn't know. You're going to a store. You're going out to the club, right? And uh, but you actually were prepared, and that's beautiful. That that's so consistent with everything, and the work that we do in mental toughness is doing the work, just like working out. You know, so that when there's a moment, you're ready. And I love I love quote CD. So uh, Denzel Washington, mm. um, the definition of luck is when timing meets preparation. Yes, yes, and that's life. Yeah, right on, right on. Oh wow, what a great! I'm so glad I asked. All right, cool. Now, good segue into. Um, so I told people what you're up to now, running CMT CMT at um, Slack. Uh so how how would you define this is being recorded in case you know you, you're you're stumbling upon this episode you know in the future this is being recorded in mid December of 2022 so how would you Reg describe the current selling environment in enterprise software sales right now incredibly challenging okay and and but but this is uh, I was having a conversation with uh, just 30 minutes ago with Bob Friday, who's our our global chief sales and success officer. And we were just talking about the environment we're in. But I, I just go back to this quote. I find a, I find a quote every week to motivate myself. Mm. And this is the one I found this week, given like the, the crazy uncertain time we're in this incredibly difficult macro environment to actually sell technology. The quote goes as follows, C.D., Sometimes we're tested not to show our weakness, but to discover our strengths. So what this environment is teaching me is to be a better leader. It's teaching me to be a better operator, to be tighter, to be um, relentless. What do you mean? When you say tighter, what do you mean? Run, a, run an incredibly sharp, tight deal cycle. Um, really triple checking every aspect of getting customer interest to actually getting signature on a deal. Do we have executive alignment? Is, do we have a compelling, are we providing like a compelling business value? Are we solving a problem? Is there a return on investment? Um, have we done like a compelling uh, demonstration of what, like what the future state's going to look like? Mm -hmm. um, do we understand every aspect of the buying process? Who's involved? Who's the decision maker? Do we have a relationship with the decision maker? Do we have a, a path to talk to the CFO? Um, do we have executive alignment at the highest levels? Um, do we know their procurement process? Do we know their legal process? What happened? What needs to happen once we get a yes to getting an actual contract signed? Mm. All of those things that we took for granted when things were great, yeah. we have to triple check every aspect of getting customer interest to getting a deal signed. It's much harder. There's more people involved in the process. If you don't have business value, you're not you're not providing efficiency, you're not providing productivity, you're not solving a business problem, no one is going to buy your software. And oh, by the way, have you confirmed that they have money to pay for it? Who, who, where's this budget coming from? So those are all the things that we took for granted when, when things were great in the technology space. And the real, the real winners, the real business operators, the real leaders are super tight with how their teams are running deal cycles. So during that remarkably thorough response to my question, thank you for that. I'm just living it, man. I'm living this every day. No, that's good. That, that, you really did answer, what do you mean by tight? <laughs> and you gave a very tight response to it. Um, and in your response, you said twice, when things were great, which implies that things are not great, right? Absolutely. I mean, think about it. Think about it. So 
we, we coming into this year, I don't know how you feel. I was feeling good, man. Portfolio was up. Market was up. We were starting to get back out in front of customers. We were traveling. We were going to see our families. We were going to shows. Restaurants were packed. And the next thing you know, interest rates went up. We're dealing with like this crazy inflationary environment that we're in. There's a war going on. There's supply chain issues. Um, people who we know, our friends, our colleagues are getting laid off. They're losing their jobs. So this is a, this is not a good environment to be in. And oh, by the way, like from what I've seen, like people are getting sick. It's like flu season's picking up. COVID's you know picking back up. There's return to work. There's work you know work from anywhere. So there's a lot going on. Um, so things aren't great right now. But at the end of the day, we still have a job to do. We still have customers that need our help. But in order to get things done, we just have to be tighter. We have to be better business operators. You know that I am a big fan of mantras. And one of the mantras that it's a mental toughness mantra that I feel like couldn't possibly be more well-timed to recall, to stay conscious of right now is this. It's one of the longer ones. Every set of circumstances can be created from if viewed masterfully. Put another way is we can create excellence out of any damn circumstance. And you know this as a former professional athlete that you um, don't brag about killing the weakest opponent. It's not a good story. What makes a good story is killing it under the most challenging of circumstances. Right? So let's talk for a minute about what are people, what do you see as people's greatest fears nowadays? What are they most afraid of and being mm, paralyzed by? I think, well, I, I can speak from like a sales professional or sales leader. I think people are scared of um, not being able to predict and forecast the business. Um, they're, they're, they're fearful of um having you know tough difficult conversations to get the information we need to win um so I, so but once again that just goes back to when you when you said about like being in a challenging environment if you mm -hmm. think i'm going to give you two examples if you think about like we're we're in this we're in bowl season right so when ohio state georgia michigan and tcu were selected to go to the playoff what was the main thing that the committee looked at? Strength of schedule. Mm. They don't, they don't, they didn't care about you blowing out teams that weren't good. They were looking at top 10 teams that you beat, top 15 teams that you beat. How did you play against those teams? So they looked at strength of schedule. And another thing that I think about as we navigate this environment, and I and I, I really anchor on inspirational leadership. So as a leader, what am I doing to inspire my team to show up every day and sell more software? And one of the things that I do is I constantly preach this to them and to myself. The two things in life you are in total control over are your attitude and your effort. Mm -hmm. I'm repeat that. The two things in life you have total control over are your attitude and your effort. In the good times and the bad times, you control your attitude and you can control your effort. And another thing, too, if you have a positive attitude and you're working hard, people may hear your words, but they feel your attitude. That's a quote mm. from John Maxwell. From who? John Maxwell. And I'll give it to you again. This is this is another one I found that, that inspired me this week. People may hear your words, but they feel your attitude. So if you're showing up the right way, you're you know you're putting in the work, you're getting your MBA and your client's business in whatever industry that you're focused on. You know your client's business wow. better than they do. You'll be relevant. People want to talk to you. And if you know their business, you can help them solve business problems. And I don't care if, if we're in a crazy macro environment or, or we're in good times. If you're solving business problems, you can still be successful in, the, in this space that we're in right now. <laughs> Hopefully I answered your question. Oh, don't even that. do that. Come on. You're answering questions before I even ask the damn things. So, uh, okay, let's, 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 let's slow it down. <laughs> I love that quote. Oh, do you, do you happen to have like a, a saved list of these quotes, by the way, somewhere? 
Yeah, like like that's a like, gold mine. Yeah, on my LinkedIn. Like so every every Sunday night I'll put a quote out once again to motivate myself and to motivate others. Cause I remember when I I remember when I was my first year of sales, had no idea what I was doing. And it was brutal because I went from an engineering role, was where I was doing really well financially to an AE role and I took a huge pay cut and I wasn't selling anything. So I was broke and I was getting rejected. I didn't know why. And I remember every Sunday night before the week started, I had this pit in my stomach. So I'd have to find something to motivate me to get 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 going for the week because I had no choice but to be successful. I just continue that. Even now, like I still find a quote every week to motivate myself to stay to stay inspired. So is there a place where anyone in the world can go to access a collection of the quotes? Yeah. On uh, I put one, it's on my LinkedIn and, and, and then on but Twitter. They gotta scroll through every week to get to one. Well, it's just every week I put one every Sunday. All right. So, all right. So obviously the, the connection, the link to connect with Reggie's in 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 the show notes. Or you just find him, Reggie Marable, <clears throat> on LinkedIn, if you're not looking at the show notes. Was that before you wrote um, The Blueprint, which I mentioned in the intro, your book, The Keys to Selling, to, The Keys to Making Capitalized, Big Capitalized Money in Pro Sales? Big. Bad why, why go into sales if you're not going to make money? You yeah, make big right, money, right? Right, right, right. No, so that was way before. And the reason I wrote the book, Chris, was because I never wanted anyone to experience when I experienced my first year in sales where um, I didn't have like a lot of sales training. Um, I was kind of like thrown to the wolves and it was a very difficult experience for me. And I had to figure out how to be successful in professional sales on my own. So I just kind of wrote a book for anyone struggling or trying to figure it out. I got a blueprint for you. Follow these things in this book. And you'll be successful. It'll shorten your learning curve. So that that's why yes. I wrote it. Yeah, that's huge. And I love the title. I love that the title starts with blueprint. It's like, let's make this easier. Let's make this faster. Right. So that's great. So the link to the, the name of the book, again, if you're like listening to this out on a run, is the blueprint, the keys to making big money in pro sales. And if you have the chance, if you can see the show notes here, of course, the link to the Amazon page where the book is available is is there i want to go back to the john maxwell quote because it's badass and i want to open it up a little bit because i know you're an expert what i'm about to ask you so he says people may hear your words but they feel your attitude i'm a big fan of vibing up uh meaning practically speaking of bringing that like attitude because this is measurable there is a machine there's a machine a mechanical apparatus called a magnetoencephalograph that measures the uh, frequency, the vibes of your thoughts, which is pretty cool because we're always doing it. You're going deep, CD. Uh, well, it's only, it ain't that deep, actually. It's not. It's not. It's actually not that deep because it's pretty. It's actually quite simple. Because look, how many times do people, or you, or all of us, we go. Uh, get a bad vibe from that guy. We, you know, we think we're being like euphemistic or metaphorical when in fact we're being quite literal. Maybe we just don't know that. People vibe high off of you, man, because you bring it. But I want to know, I and mean, when I say bring it, you bring a really high vibe. You bring an exceptionally high vibe. People want to be around you. You know, I talked about your invitation to uh, join the 100 black men of uh, Atlanta, big deal. Congratulations on that, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, people feel you, man. You, and, and like people want to be around you and people want to do good for you. Uh, I know it. I know I know it because you know I know a lot of people that know you. <laughs> and, and, a lot, and some people that you've worked for who have identified you as one of, if not the best. So I want I want to I want to bring this to um, as practical a nature as possible. Uh, how is my question to you? How do you keep your attitude amazing? Give me some practical things, some practices or disciplines or like just just what do you do, man, to keep your attitude incredibly unusually like you're an outlier. You really are. And I'm not saying this to compliment you. I'm saying it because it's a fact. 
Very nice of you, right. by the way. On the normal curve, you are an outlier. You're like two standard deviations from the mean, all right, uh, in terms of attitude. Why? How do you do it? So I'll tell, I'll tell a story, and then um, maybe, maybe this will help. It starts off with how I was raised. Like my, my dad was full car, full colonel in the U.S. Army, retired 30 years in the U.S. Army. He was a Special Forces Army Ranger, Green Beret, 82nd Airborne. Holy crap. And I remember I don't know bad, that part. Bad dude, man. Really humble, shy guy if you meet him. But So I remember when I, when I was in high school, he had just got his command in the 82nd Airborne. And that's like getting a command in, in the military. That's like becoming like a president of a company. Hmm. And it's a big deal. And he was on, um, we, we had relocated back to, we were living in Germany, moved back to Fort Bragg, North Carolina, where the 82nd Airborne is. And these are the bad soldiers that parachute out of planes into battle. My dad had a command. And I remember his first month on the job, he was on a routine parachuting um, expedition exercise. And he got stuck in a tree and he fell 50 feet and broke his back. And then I remember they they told him like, like, dude, you'll you'll be lucky to walk again. You're never gonna jump out of planes. Like, strip this command away because if you you can't like physically perform, you can't lead troops. So I remember watching him, 18 months grueling surgery rehab. He was walking around the house with a cast on on his back. Mm. But this dude like just grinded, hustled, and not only did he rehab himself back, but he got his command back. He was the first. African American soldier to lead troops in a battle as a, a commanding officer in the 82nd Airborne. So wow. I remember that. I remember seeing that, and I'm like, man, if he can deal with that, like, what am I complaining about selling software or going to college, whatever it may be? So I think that, like, being thankful, being grateful, work ethic was was instilled within my soul at an early age, and I just saw how like my dad and my mom worked and hustled. So I think some people get blessed with like mathematical genius or great writers i just got one of my gifts i think is just being a great people person and just caring about others and i love this quote from ali service to others is the rent you pay for your room here on earth so i just try to put people first and um i think if people realize you care about them and you're not like oh it's not all about you it's about like us or helping other people people respond to that favorably and just in conversations, man, you know, you go, you're, you're at a party and you're talking to somebody and all they talk about is themselves. Like, that's not inspiring. Like, I, I'm more about helping others, um, seeing other people be successful, because I know that that's that's the way that I'm going to win, too. So that's kind of how I look at life. Um, okay. And then, you know, I, I, I failed, man. Like, I, the, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Chris. Keep going. Keep going. The la last thing I'll say is. Is uh, I, I've over the I've been with um, Salesforce and I've been in the tech industry now for six years, and um, I had most of my career was in the telecom industry. I went from a customer service rep to running. Um, I had a big job at Sprint, running a global sales organization. Then I left Sprint to become the CRO of a mid-sized media company. And at the time, I was the smartest guy in the room, had a big ego, and I failed at that job. I got fired. I was unemployed for six months. Like this was like, six years ago. And I had to, I had to figure out what am I going to be? What am I going to do? What kind of leader am I going to be? And I had a friend, his name was Ryan Ratting. He worked at Salesforce and he's like, dude, you should come over to Salesforce. It's a great company, but you're going to have to come in first line sales leadership role and, and, and prove yourself. So I came in, I had to swallow my pride, had to reinvent myself. But this time I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it different. I'm going to be more humble. I'm going to listen more going to be more respectful. I'm not the smartest guy in the room. And I, I think that style has really allowed me to flourish. So I'm not like, I'm not like, I'm not fake, man. I don't make this stuff up. Like I'm not, I'm just, I'm a naturally passionate and energetic person just because I, I just, I love life, man. I want to help other people be successful. Well, okay. Now that in the very last, okay. The, the, <laughs> the very last two things right there. I love life. Okay. So that's a takeaway. All right. That's a choice. I think it's a good one. I got to tell you, I think it, this whole world would be so much better if a lot more people would make that decision. I love life. You just said that. You said it pretty quick. Yeah, it's not rosy. So just like, like tactically speaking, what I try to do is I try to every day I get up, I try to do like a little bit of like self-reflection 
I'll just tell myself, it takes like two minutes, all the great things that's happening in my life. So if you ever wake up in a bad mood, you start saying like, you know, hey, I got a great family. I got a great wife, got great kids. I'm doing well. I got a career. I got a reputation. I got friends. I got people that care about me. Uh, future is bright. Next thing you know, you're like, what am I complaining about? Like, so that okay. self-reflection, I work out. I try to work out in the mornings to get yep. the right yep. mental attitude. And working out, is, it's not just like looking great, but it's it's like spiritual and mental and physical, like like, uh, like rejuvenation. And then and then I just try to like do gratitude, man. Like I know one of the guy I report to, his name is Ad, Adnan Chandri. Every meeting, he's always like, everybody, let's take a minute and just go say thank you to somebody and do some gratitude. So oh, that's, awesome. that's awesome. Exercise and just self-reflection and gratitude is how I try to try my best to stay positive. Yeah. Okay. Those now there's some real practice. I love that. Because um can you hear that? No. Oh really? Oh, okay. There's a car alarm going off, but it sounds like it's a, a car that's moving. <laughs> no, I don't hear that. I don't know how that works. Okay. Um, that's amazing because it's really loud. Uh you know, most people wake up and you, you still don't hear that? Mm. Wow. All right. It just drove by. So anyway, uh, they wake up and the first thing they think of is what they got to do today. Like what I have to, what I have to do. And it's not super inspired level thinking. It's like, oh man. Oh my God. I got six meetings. Or, oh God. I got to talk to that person. Oh, I got to do that report, you know, uh, as opposed to what you're saying. So, uh, so that's a takeaway which is start your day with how fortunate you are. And so what you're, what I'm hearing you say is you're choosing, you could call us in psychology, we call it selective attention. You are choosing to attend to the content and the realities in your life that are inspiring, that are uplifting. You're cho It's real. You're not making shit up and you're choosing to acknowledge it. So you're creating inspiration. You're, you're creating inspiration, which is actually, interestingly, the podcast, that my last episode, it was a replay of Steve Chandler, and it's about choosing inspiration, not waiting for it. And that's what you're doing in the morning and exercise. Awesome. Now, a lot of people recognize you as a phenomenal leader, right? What would you say, or what do you say, are some of the most important attributes or behaviors of great leaders and how do you practice getting the most out of your people so i think we've all we've all worked or worked with like phenomenal leaders we worked with some really bad leaders and i've taken like different aspects of different leadership styles but at the end of the day my principles are very simple. I'm open. I'm honest. I'm transparent. I treat people with respect. I never ask anybody to do something I wouldn't do myself. Mm -hmm. um, humility is important. Uh, work, work ethic, being accessible, being available, open door policy, no ego. And then finally, like having fun, like let's have some fun. Let's enjoy this. We're all going to be together like for probably more than we spend time with our families. Let's have some fun doing it. So I think you common, you know, you cobble all that together. That's to me what what really leadership is. And then if you 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 do those things, people feel safe around you. They know that you're always going to tell them the truth. You're always going to keep it real. But you're also like you're going to have fun. We're going to you know we're going to make this fun while we do it. I'm so glad you said that. I'm so so glad you include that because you know you know that a huge portion of my career was working specifically solely with competitive athletes, right? And sports psych, metal game, sports. And I studied fun. <laughs> studied the zone. Right? The peak human peak performance state. And isn't it fascinating that no one has ever described a peak experience as unpleasant. In fact, they've described it the opposite. Fun is almost always a word that's used as some form of lightness of being that's used in description of ourselves when we're at our best. 
So there's a great intelligence and fun. I have a request. So you wrote a blueprint for people, you know, how to uh, speed up and uh, increase the learning curve on how to sell, make big, big money in professional sales. I know you're humble. You've identified that as one of the great characteristics of an excellent leader. At the same time, you know, um, I, I, I don't want you to be stingy with your most valuable practices. So uh, my request is for you to consider, just consider. I'm not asking you to go all in on this call, but please consider writing a blueprint for how to lead people into their own excellence. Like for leaders, how to lead amazingly. So that's my request. We we at least consider that. Yeah, you know what? I was I was writing like another book. It's called The Blueprint Two: The Keys to Success in Leadership. I just oh, I you're way ahead of me. Well, I got busy with life and you know career, so I haven't. Okay, well, well, then I, then I was sent okay, okay by the universe as simply a reminder. Hey, let's go get back to those. Open those notes up and just write. Just just be jotting some things down as you go through on what are the specifics. And there's some you, you just mentioned here, you know, humility, great listening. You know, you did mention that. So before we wrap it up, but I, we'll wrap up here in a second. But I want to um, I, I want to ask you about that, because that, that's something that keeps coming up for me in my coaching with leaders. You know, I coach a ton of leaders and and great listening has always been. I mean, I, I, when I think about all the great leaders that I've experienced in my life, they absolutely were great listeners. Look at the way you're, look at the way he's listening right now. Well, so, so it's funny you say that CD, cause I'm still, I still struggle with that. Like it's, it's a work in progress. If you were to ask my, my 14 year old son, he would say like, dude, it's got a lot of work to do. We were having an uh, argument last night. He's like an incredible football player. And I'm telling him, like, dude, you got to play in it. Because he, he was playing soccer. He gave that up. I'm like, you got to run track in the offseason. But he wants to train for football and do seven on seven. And I'm like, no, you're running track. Like, this is this is not this, this is not a debate. And yeah. he's like, well, you're not listening to me. And he's like, you keep saying you want to work on that, but you're not, you're not like, you're not, you're not getting Whoa, better. Oh, he's calling. <laughs> but I'm like, this is different, man. Like, I know. Nice play, Chase. Nice play, Chase. No, but but I will I will say though it's it's a, it's a, it's a work in progress. I have my family like really helping me get better at that, and it's not just like listening; it's active listening, it's deep listening. What does that mean? Tell me what that means. It's it's most people, me included, I'm listening so I can respond. Right, I'm listening so I can interject what I want to say versus listening to what you're saying, understanding what you're saying, and not thinking about how I'm going to respond to that. Like that's the difference. I think some people are only listening to what they want to hear so they can respond back. I'm talking about like, I'm going to wait, I'm going to listen, I'm going to let you finish your point, then I'll respond. So that that's what I'm working on. And I, and I, I write, I have this little sticky note when I'm like, cause you know, you were on Zooms all day. And even in, even in face-to-face -face meetings, I have a little note that says, shut up, stop, listen, don't say anything, don't say anything, don't say anything. Sometimes I'll do like this in meetings just so I remind myself to shut up and let the other person. <laughs> That's so interesting. You literally cover your damn mouth. In my mouth, man. And then, and then, you know, if I, I, I'm a type A personality. I know a lot of people are type A. If, if we start talking, then we suck the energy out of the room and other people don't, don't participate. Cause like we have, if you have a dominant personality, so I struggle with it. It's a work in progress, but I know that it's a critical skill to being successful in life in all aspects of life, if you're a good listener. Wow. Well, that's, that's powerful. You, um, you've demonstrated some phenomenal listening here being a guest, Fine, man. as a guest, if you could listen well as a guest, when your job is to talk, <laughs> I think you're doing better than you're giving yourself credit for, but I appreciate uh, you saying it's a work in progress because it is, it's not, and that's what it is really is practice, right? Not just about being a great listener, being a great leader, being great at, at, at everything and you're cool with practice that's one thing about you that really is amazing is uh, you know because i read i love following you on um on on linkedin and and facebook particularly i don't really do a lot of instagram or twitter um but you're you're pretty prolific man and your content is is incredible 
Um, and what, a con- no, it's nice, man. I don't, it's like, there's a few people, you know, whose stuff I really look forward to, you know, um, and you're one of them, man, uh, because it's always in service, you know? And one of the things is like that you make clear is that you do your practice, you walk your talk, but your content is never, uh, it, I've never seen one thing about you unless it's about you in service. You know, to other people. So that's fantastic. So while we're on that note, where you know, people, places where people can follow you and learn from you and, and be inspired by you. You're, you're very active on LinkedIn. I'll put all these links in there. Um, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. And also, I'll make sure to include the link um, to, to the first of your books. <clears throat> um which is available now on Amazon as will the, the next one. Do you have a working title by any chance for the, for the upcoming one on the blueprint for, for leadership? No, nah, I was, it was just going to be blueprint to the keys to success and leadership. I, I'm just still yeah. playing. With it. And I got, a, I just, I just got a car out the time. I, how I did the first one. I just started 10 minutes a week. Oh. And the next thing you know, it was 30 minutes a week. Then it was an hour. And the next thing you know, you have your year later, you got a book done. Oh, so go. for anyone out there that's interested in writing a book, it's not that hard. You just get an outline and just carve out the time to do it. There's so much, there's so many resources to self-publish nowadays. Writing a book is not very difficult. That is a really great unexpected or unanticipated piece of advice right there. I love that. <laughs> you know, it took me six years to, it took me two months to write my first book. And it took me six years to start. <laughs> <laughs> Because I find all the, you know, oh, it's a book. Oh, my God, it's a painting. Oh, it's got to be such a big deal, blah, blah, blah. So that's nice. Just put it down, write it, or start, right, schedule it is what I meant to say. Schedule, schedule your time for that creation. All right, well, I'm going to mirror that right back to you. My request is for you to schedule 10 minutes. I'm going to try, man. Schedule 10 minutes. <laughs> all right, well, when you try things, you, you don't try shit. You just do things. You get things done. My man. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, making the time uh, to, to share, um, you know, s- some, a sliver of your excellence uh, with, with my Tough Talks tribe. I appreciate you so much, man. My pleasure, man. You're, you're a great mentor. You're an awesome brother. It's an honor to be here, CD, and I appreciate all the kind words you said about me. And thank you for um, being a part of my life, man. You're, you're awesome. Amen, man. Amen. All right, buddy. We'll talk soon. All right, man. I've never heard that quote before. Actually, I guess there's a couple. <laughs> He's like the quote meister. Oh, man, I didn't. Oh, he said that they're on his um, LinkedIn. So I, oh, I know I'm not finishing sentences. It's helpful, right? To be a podcast host and start a whole shitload of sentences that you don't finish. Very useful. Uh, yeah, but I'm really interested in his quotes list. <laughs> I'm going to pester him. I want him to organize them. I was like, dude, do work on your own. He, he posts them on Sundays on LinkedIn. But I think it would be, man, he could write another book too <laughs> on, on all these great quotes, but not just a list of quotes. It's like, why are they relevant to him? Like, why did he pick those? Why are they meaningful to him? But the one that, that, you know, that I wrote down was the John Maxwell one, right? Which is people hear your words, but they feel feel your attitude and I'm, I'm, I'm going out on a limb not and uh, and hypothesize that if you listened to this far you felt his vibe Reggie has an incredible vibe uh, and, I, and I you know maybe we, we could have talked about that actually more you know um, or maybe we did it justice it's because it's so damn important I really do believe how how absolutely integral it is to inspiring people is to bring the vibe, right? Is to, to bring the, uh, you know, the John Maxwell quote is attitude, but that attitude is measurable and you feel it, right? Through its vibration. So I hope that you enjoyed Reggie's vibe and 
the, the nuggets of, of uh, integrity and leadership gold and humility. You know, trying to get him to talk specifics about why he's such a badass ain't easy. Because <laughs> he's too damn humble. All right, folks, thanks for tuning in, as always, uh, to Tough Talks. And until next time, great miracles. Mm -hmm.